I guess, preparation before you walk into a, a, a location? Like, what do you have something that y'all do, a ritual that y'all do? Uh, you we know, always, we always open with a prayer protection against the whole group. We do the bloody water across everyone's forehead, then we do it on the neck, you know, to protect them from front to back. Oh, or the holy <laughs> oil. My bad. It's been a long day. I was like, I was like, bloody water? What the hell is that? <laughs> and then we, all, we also do sage. So, okay. You know, so that's what, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much where yeah. we go in from there. We go in and set up, and that's it. And then we close, so, we close the evening with prayer, and we. Do you usually find yourself wanting to sage and and cleanse every bit of equipment and your cars and everything at some locations no, no. because they're hairy? I've saged, I've saged my vehicle one time, and that was. Mainly because it had been a long day, uh, and it was, and at the end of the night, it was like four o'clock in the morning. It was a, it was a really deep investigation, and some crazy junk happens. And I just told Michelle, I said, you know what? That was some dark shit we just left, and I'm just gonna be safe about it. And so that's why I, I saged my car when I dropped her off at her house. We decided to sage my car before I left, and we said a prayer over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but that's been the only time it's ever happened. Other than that, we've never done it. But yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna get into some uh, controversial little. Con- uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's controversial. I just know that some people really, really put a lot of stock into orbs, and some people don't. And yep. some people have have their debunkers, and I don't know. I heard that maybe you're the one that's the debunker of the team on the orbs. Well, well, the way I look at it, an orb could be just about <laughs> any flipping thing known to man. I mean, it could be anything from a bug to a ball of gas to a freaking, you know, fuzz bunny, you know, floating in the air. It could be anything. So, just, I find it, I'm one of those, if I don't immediately see, like, a tail on it or if it don't really grab my eye, I don't even look at it a second time. I just keep on flipping through the pictures. Because, I mean, it's so many times, eight out of ten times, it's nothing most of the time. Right. And I don't have $10,000 to go spend on equipment to tell me whether or not this house has a gas leak, you know? <laughs> I Isn't mean, that true? <laughs> so, what do you think about orbs, Michelle? What are your What are your thoughts on them? About the same. I mean, it's, sometimes I feel like it is, and sometimes I don't. I mean, yeah, you know, the only time that I really look double or, you know, maybe two or three times at a photo is if I actually see it emitting its own energy. Like right. it has its own light. Like yeah. it, it is an energy plasma ball. It's not an actual orb or what they would consider an orb. I call it a ball of energy. Um, yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, that's more or less what we call it. I was yeah. just telling Kristen earlier, I've seen one come down, yes. flying down the staircase, come bouncing on the walls. It sees me and Sarah standing there, and it comes to a complete stop, and it shoots right towards us. I mean, that ain't dust. No. And I have no. and I have seen an orb when we, the first time I went to Duff Green, when I first joined the group, when we went to Duff Green, we, uh, I was actually sitting in the middle of the room on the floor, just opened up my suitcase, and I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye. It looked like an orb. Well, I shrugged it off. I said, that's just you, you know, letting your imagination carry away because, you know, you're there for to investigate, you know. And then I said, well, you know, maybe it is something. It was not within the next 10 minutes. I saw two more come by, and I caught the third one looking dead at it. And it was just, it was like it was coming in our room, going into our bathroom, and walking right back out. And it done it three times. And the third oh, time wow. I actually saw it. The first two times is out of the corner of my eye. Now, seeing it in my own naked eye, that's a totally different story, you know. That's crazy. I, and, I, I've, you know, we caught. It ain't no light, so, I mean. We caught on our first investigation when we first got our, our camera equipment, our DVR system. We were so excited. We go out to this case that we had, um, and we called it the Possessed Bird Case. And the the case was 
this lady that I'd known all my life, she's moved into this house. She has this huge bird, and it used to call her mama and hello and love you and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, and dropping the F-bomb in front of her grandkids, and I'm talking in a demonic voice. Oh, my um, God. And I'm like, she's like, I don't know. You got to come check this bird out. Something's wrong with this damn bird. You know, it used to be like, hi, I love you. Have You know, hi, mama, things like that. Now it's going, thank you, you know, and things like that. And and she's like, my grandkids are in there at Easter, and this bird's in there dropping S-bombs left and right. And oh my God. She, goes in there, she goes in there, and she covers the bird up, try to shut him up, and it just made him louder. Well. So we go out there and, you know, um, set up our cameras, and we set up an IR camera on the bird. And um, we're doing all kinds of EVP sessions, and we're getting all kinds of uh, contact with uh, ex-slaves from the past, um, which was weird. And then we got information that there was an entity in that room that was not going to allow anyone in there around the bird. And if wow. anybody messed with it, that they were going to hurt the bird. And this oh, bird was like a part of her family, right? Yeah. Um, well, we put the camera on the bird, and we're sitting there taking a break. And Penny's watching this camera, and all of a sudden, Penny backs up, and she's like, what the hell is that? And when we reviewed it, it looked like the bird had either farted a, a piece of feather I don't know. And it and it grew and it came towards the the camera and got bigger and bigger. Well, when we slowed it down, it didn't come out of the bird. It looked like it came from the electrical socket in the wall. Oh my god. And when it came out of the wall, it started out as this little bitty band with these almost like you know those little um oh things that used to go around, used to hold and blow and they would you know, the little I can't remember what they're called, little spin wheels, spin wheels, whatever. Yeah. Okay, well, it looked like a long, elongated body with all those spin wheels around it when it got to the camera. It grew. It went from little tiny to inches long and then went off the camera. Wow. Um, We had a couple of people look at it, and what they came up with was it wasn't, paranormal it was more extraterrestrial what yeah i'm like look we're looking for ghosts we're not looking for et i don't know how that even happened you sound like me (laughs) oh you know give me some ghosts (laughs) yeah i mean i don't know you know i don't know about the alien thing or how that even happened but it was called a spiral a spiral rod or flying fish, and it said that it was more extraterrestrial in nature than it would be paranormal. And I'm like, that is strange. Have y'all ever had any type of anomaly like that that you've seen? Actually, I did. Remember, I had a picture, I believe it was from Coons, wasn't it? Yeah, it From Coons Hospital that was the same way, honestly, except ours, it was called something, it was some type of rod. I don't know. Spiral rod. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A girl, yeah. that damn picture drove me nuts for three days <laughs> because it was one of the, um, there was another spot in it where it looked like there might have been a shadow that had formed over in a corner. And so between me, I had a copy of the picture. I had the original copy, and then I sent Michelle a copy of it, and then I had a second copy, and I think Sarah even had a copy. And the three of us looked and looked and looked at this damn thing. And, I mean, I finally went to Google. <laughs> wow. And I, could, cause I couldn't find I could not. It baffled us. Yeah. We never had it pop up on any of our pictures before. That's why we were so, like, a lot what of the people hell? it was a bat. Well, there was no bat. Yeah, we even posted people. to our Facebook page, you know, asking, you know, well, has, have, has any of our paranormal friends seen this before? And somebody made a comment, oh, that's just a bat. We've caught that before in one of our pictures. I'm thinking a bat. Wow. <laughs> and there was no way there was bats there. I mean, we would have heard or seen it, and there wasn't any that night. <laughs> List places. Yes. You know. Yeah. Tell. I've been to a lot of really. list place 
What's that again? We couldn't hear you. All right. Um, on your bus, you would want to go to if you had the opportunity. Oh, that would be the Lizzie Borden house. Oh, my God. That is on my bucket list. One day I will be there. Because of the... Hello? I think we're losing you, Selena. Uh-oh. Are you? It's breaking up a little bit now. Can you hear me at all? Now we can. Okay. I don't know what happened. I'm I haven't moved an inch. Um uh, maybe that little <laughs> maybe that little spirit is uh, not real happy with me and messing with my show. You better calm down. I got about ten minutes. Just relax, <laughs> spirit. Um so Lizzie Borden and what about you, Kristen? You same thing, Lizzie Borden, or you got another location in mind? I wanna go to the Winchester house. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. That's that's two formidable little little locations there that I have not yet been to. And Lizzie Borden happens to be really high up on my bucket list. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, those two are like a those two are like my number ones. Like I can't put either one in number two. <laughs> Maybe we can make a road trip, Selena. <laughs> well, you know yeah, we can do that. Um, you know we are going to Biloxi. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about real quick before we before we run out of time. Let me see how much time we have. Okay. Probably about 10 minutes. So I was going to talk about a couple of the um, events, but before I announce the events and before the end of the show, let's talk about Gulf Coast Paracon. Um, yes. Tell me a little bit about what I might be seeing, because I've never been to Biloxi, Mississippi. We've never been. Oh, so we're all little virgins to Biloxi, Mississippi, I see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ah, we're going to get our little paranormal cherries popped in the in, in Mississippi. <laughs> all righty <laughs> then. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're going to have a blast. So we are going to investigate, and I hope I'm saying this right, Bavor, is that how you say it, the Bavor Plantation? The Jefferson I've, Bavor Plantation, I believe. Or, yeah, something like that, okay. yeah. All right. I guess that's because, how you pronounce it. <laughs> and I know that Biloxi also has a little bit of Katrina uh, issues as well because it got pretty much wiped yes. out. And so where we're staying is going to be the, the site of a lot of drowning, uh, a, a lot of drowning. And we could probably get activity at the hotel we're staying at. Um, Sounds great. Sounds like we need to get rooms side by side. That way we can use one another's rooms. Yeah, I'm here. I, we can, you know, I'm all for that. <laughs> I'm all for that. But we got we got so many cool things going on. And, and you, you and uh, your team uh, and I have talked about getting together uh, mm-hmm. with our friend Kelly and yeah. uh, and going to Arcadia. Yes. Now, why don't you, Michelle, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about why we want to go to our Uh To Gibson, that would be the Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> yep, yep. And yep. Arcadia would be because Bonnie and Clyde were displayed like pieces of meat after they were murdered. And, at the funeral uh, home. At the funeral home. And that is exactly what, we're on the trail of Bonnie and Clyde. That's what we are. That's that's our little thing um and i can't wait to actually get to go to arcadia and and do that now i did take uh <laughs> kelly and Derek on a personal tour yes. of kennedy and um bonnie and clyde here in dallas while they were here and it actually ended up being really a cool day um bonnie was uh jailed <laughs> Which was yep. interesting. It was outside. Um, we went to, to her grave. We went to his grave. We went all over the place and, and pretty much chased Bonnie and Clyde all over Dallas. Um, but there's such a, a big deal there in, in Louisiana because of that's where it all ended for them. Yeah. Well, I'm ready what, whenever you want. 
shit. We've already talked about it. We just got to get we just got to get a date set, and we are there. I'm gonna right. make it happen. Well, let me get um, a little cooler. <laughs> yeah, we need to also. Uh, yeah, we ain't gonna have that. Because